Hi, this is Mathematics Course, and today we're going to be talking about something interesting. Football strategies. What? We're not going to be talking about football strategies? Okay. Apparently, we're going to be talking about parabolic reflectors. Okay. So, to make this interesting, we actually hired a celebrity to tell you what a parabolic reflector is. I'm sure most of you are familiar with Morgan Freeman. Wait, Derek. Not... Not yet, not yet. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, budget Morgan Freeman, a bit to a bit higher, a bit higher, slightly lower, a bit. You all right? Perfect. Okay. A parabolic reflector is a device that is used to collect or project energy such as light, sound, or radio waves. Thank you, Morgan Freeman. Do you just love that voice? Let's look at the history of parabolic reflectors for now. Hi, I'm Jack Lim. You don't have to introduce yourself. Chih, don't, I don't need to do what you say, man. Screw this. During the course of history, even as early as the Greek civilization, parabolic reflectors have been a valuable asset to the populace, even during wars. During the Cypriot invasion, the Greek philosopher Archimedes had been tasked with a Herculean feat of decimating the much, much larger Cyprian fleet. That was an almost impossible task. But being Archimedes, he was smart. He aligned a lot of parabolic mirrors along the coast and used the power of the sun to set the entire Cyprian fleet ablaze. How smart was that? Eh, eh, oh. eh. Oh, well, thank you for that awesome flashback, Jack. I'm not done. However, this event was, and still is, widely debated for its historical accuracy. Nevertheless, the invention of the parabolic reflector isn't suited to be credited to Archimedes. But instead, the invention of the parabolic reflector should be credited to the mathematician Diocles. He described them in his book On Burning Mirrors and proved that they can focus a parallel beam to a point. So, in a way, he is the daddy of parabolic reflectors. That was when the theory started to take off. Interesting. But how did it really work? That is not a question for me. Reflecting on the question why it works, to understand why the miracle known as uh, parabolic reflectors work, we must first understand how they came to be and where they came to be from. Let's look at their namesake, parabolas. This is a graph of a generic parabola with a very slight twist. It is defined by the equation y squared is equal to 4ax, where a is something called the focal length. A focus is any point on the parab uh, is a point on the parabola where all the chords when reflected converge. Let's a line through the focus is known as a directrix and the line through the negative uh, focus is called the lattice rectum. These two lines are will always be parallel to each other as they are equidistant from the origin. Now, in, in this case, imagine my ruler as a ray of light and this parabola as a, par as a reflector held this way. So what happens is, when light is incident on one, uh, on one uh, of the surface of the parabola, uh, the normal is generated, at, uh, generated perpendicular to the incident ray of light. What happens then is a neat bit of magic. The, due to the shape of the parabola, the reflected ray from any point on the parabola, like a cord, cuts the focus. So the focus is where the most energy is stored. It is, the har it is when we harness this energy that we are able to channel it into multiple useful, uh, multiple useful devices. The same case can be viewed in the case of an x squared is equal to 4ay parabola. This is the most commonly used kind of parabola as its shape is ideal for it to be mounted on, on satellite dishes, TV antennas, etc, etc. Its uses are practically limitless. Microwave ovens everywhere, anywhere, anywhere you can think about. Now, 
Let's look at this. The same thing applies where a is the focal length. A, uh, y, uh, x is equal to a is the focus. The line through the focus becomes a directrix and the lattice rectum is the negative of the, uh, is, a, is a directrix of the negative focus. The reflection of the cor now the takeaway from this the takeaway from this lesson is that the reflection of the chord will always always pass through the focus. This is due to the shape of the parabola and the parabola's ability to reflect any line through the normal on uh, and divert it towards its focus. The greater the accuracy of the curvature of the parabola, the greater uh, the greater the energy that it can be stored at the focus. Hence, it is necessary for such parabolic reflectors to be precisely constructed so the most energy can be harnessed. Thank you. Alright, so now that we know how it works, we can then proceed to actually... Time to the seat. What are you doing? My mom's watching. I don't care. No, this is my seat. You see this? It says direct. The club knows me. You can't do this, man. Oh, really? Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, security, yes. store, please, store, security, 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 Okay, 2D parabola reflectors. What you see at the end of the line is usually what you call the parabola. And light is usually generated in a pipe in front of the reflector. And it's set at the focus point so that most heat can be generated, you know. Efficiency, save money, go college, make money. Okay, so basically that's all I know about 2D parabola reflectors. And did you know it can also orient itself, orient itself from the sun? So cool, right? Don't even know what that is. Do you know the awesome moment when you wake up in the morning and you're full of energy? Me, neither. Energy. What is energy? Where do we can get it from? Is it something necessary? Can we get energy by a parabolic reflector? Well, technically, I'm not going to talk about all those questions. I'm here would like to talk something about 3D parabolic reflector. Parabolic reflector. Parabolic can be seen from every angle. Larger parabolic reflectors that are dishes are generally used to power and engines running generators. Parabolic reflector also able to move with the sun so they can get the most direct sunlight. Thank you very much, Jack and Punes. So, we've learned about how parabolic reflectors work as well as the types there are. How about their application? Are we still in an age where parabolic reflectors don't suit our times? Are they outdated? Turns out, not so much. The application of parabolic reflectors are much relevant to our modern society. Recently, we have seen the, this application come about in our daily life. For example, satellite dishes, telescope, a parabolic microphone, lightning device, and more. However, we are just going to concentrate on satellite dishes for today. Okay, it's basically a dish-shaped type of an, uh, parabolic antenna, which is used to receive electromagnetic signal from satellite. We, normally, you will see people put these uh, satellite dishes on their rooftop uh, to get better signal for their satellite. Program. The solar burner is a mid-sized parabolic which is used for most effective cooking results. The diameter is about 5 meter which, is, which produces a high output of energy and it is not too large so that one has difficulty reaching the cooking plates. Here are some quick stats about the cookers. It has a shallow parabola. Its focal length is of 60 centimeter. It ha on a sunny day it produces a maximum of 1500 watts. And with that, it produces a temperature of around 440 degrees Celsius. However, it's worth it remembered how close parabolic reflectors are to our daily lives. Just take a look at your car, uh, car, for example, especially the headlights. The headlight reflector directs the random light rays of a light bulb into a concentrated beam of light. 
The production of a headlight consists of a layer of silver, chrome, or aluminum deposited on a layer of polished, smooth, brass, or glass surface. The outer surface of this layer soon tarnishes in air. Therefore, for a glass reflector, the back face is usually painted with a shellac varnish or something similar to the protection of the coating. A wise man once said, not everything is sunshine and rainbows. This is also true for parabolic reflectors. One of the disadvantages of parabolic reflectors is its size. In solar farms, parabolic reflectors are built to be very large. Therefore, this will take up a lot of space and it is a total waste of precious land. Furthermore, parabolic reflectors are easily damaged. Imagine that a standstorm would took place in a solar farm and these parabolic reflectors would not be able to easily withstand the strong winds and will most likely be damaged by the debris. This leads us to our next problem, which is the cost. Massive pro uh, professional grade parabolic reflectors are superbly expensive and therefore the repair costs of these reflectors are sky high. To overcome these problems, uh, scientists and engineers must work together in order to reduce the building costs of these reflectors and to maintain its quality.